We're talking with Dr. Richard Silberstein of Swinburne University in Melbourne, Australia, who's just done some groundbreaking research finding that the brain patterns of kids with ADHD display startlingly similar characteristics to those of people with high creativity. Is that a good summary, That's Richard? That's correct. Yeah, okay. Robert, and, 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 and I guess the question is, by medicating ADHD out of our kids, are we preventing ourselves as a culture from having the next uh, Ben Franklin and, and Thomas Edison come along? Robert in Miami. Hey, Robert, you're on the air with, with uh, Richard and I. Mr. Harmon, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, um, you have great source of education, uh, especially on the political side. Um, anyway, my question for Dr. Silverstein is that uh, is there any relationship between uh, uh, ADHD and other learning disabilities? I have a stepdaughter that has been uh, pretty much disqualified and, and thrown on the side by the school system, um, and we're, we're having a hard time trying to figure out what we have to do with her. and. Right now, she's only attending, uh, uh, you know, GED classes, and because mm -hmm. she hasn't been able to, to uh, integrate into the system, basically. So my question is simple: you know, how, is that related to AD, the ADHD, or is there something uh, there, more? There, than there appears to be a relationship between uh, ADHD and other symptoms, particularly, you, for Robert. example, such things as dyslexia, uh, is one of the most common ones. Uh, in some cases, there are more severe cases. Um, oppositional defiant behavior, for example, is another label uh, that's used. But certainly, it is related to some of the, the uh, there appears to be a relationship with other disorders as well. Mm -hmm. My sense of ODD was always that uh, oppositional kids were that way because they didn't fit into the school system and they just got pissed off about it, frankly. I think that could well be the you case. Know, and, and it's not you know a specific disorder, but you know who knows. Uh, let's see here. John in Portland. John, you're on the air. Hi, I have a call, uh, thought about impulsive behavior, mm -hmm. which is considered one of the hallmarks yeah. of ADD in a lot of people's minds. And yet it seems like that's how animals function. Yeah. All animals function on impulse. And I'm wondering if all impulse behavior is bad, it, it doesn't seem like appropriate. Okay. Seems like uh, in, impulse, John? Uh, in Richard? Um, that's an interesting question because, in fact, the, the relationship between creativity um, and ADHD seems to be more on the ADD aspect, that is to say the attentional component, not so much the hyperactivity components because classically ADHD is a mix, is the combination of the inattention and the hyperactivity, but it seems to be much more that it's the inattention aspect which is linked to uh, the creativity. Hmm. Distractibility. Uh, yes, that's right, precisely, to. because what is distractibility in one case may in fact be the ability to look, at, if you will, I hate to say this, outside the square, seeing mm -hmm. outside the normal pattern that people are watching and seeing relationships that others don't see. Mm -hmm. Is outside the square the cliche in Australia? Here yes, it's outside it the box. It's uh, outside yeah. the square yeah. box. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Denny in Seattle. Hey, Denny. Oh, hi, Tom. How you doing? Good. What's up? ADHD guy. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I struggled with this growing up myself. Mm -hmm. Both of my sons struggled with it growing up. I watched. I want to talk. I'm going to try to stay focused here because I've got a couple of points. Well, it's got, uh, you, got, you got to keep it down to one, Denny. We got six more people. Okay. We got three okay. minutes. Okay. Um, the educational system. Mm. I watched the educational system turn what was a misnomer as even a learning disability into a discipline problem. My son, 25 years old, is now in prison. Oh my. Mm. Um, I had a meeting with the uh, superintendent of the special education Lake Washington School District, watched them push him into a rage, hmm. had the guy respond to me in this meeting uh, when I said, well, what are you, what are you guys going to do with these guys? Oh, they're, the prisons are filling up with them. That's where they're going. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, and, um, and, and Denny, d tragically, thank you for the call. Uh, Richard, tragically, this is such a frequent I know in Australia, I've, I worked up in the Lockhart River community with an Aboriginal community and did some consulting for a school up there back 10 years ago when you and I first met. That's right. And they were diagnosing the Aboriginal kids left and right as ADHD. Uh, precisely. In fact, that goes back to your original theory about the hunter-gatherer aspect as well. Yeah. In fact, some yeah. societies which are more hunter-gatherers, the incidence sometimes has been rated as high as 80%, which is crazy, actually. Yeah. That is really pathologizing, normal right. behavior. Right. Right, but it's 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 like we're 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 driving people into this. Jerry in Detroit, you're on with Richard and me. Hi, I have a, a question. I'm kind of confused with the term subconscious and unconscious. It seems to have been, subconscious seems to have been replaced with unconscious, which tends to seem to me like somebody that got kicked in the head. Mm. Where subconscious is something that 
you think below your con- you know below your consciousness. Mm-hmm. Okay, do uh, you want to take a shot at defining these terms, Richard? Um, well, I, I think uh, there is a distinction between subconscious and unconscious. Let me just focus a little bit on subconscious because much of the creative process we now realize, in fact, does not occur consciously. In fact, in many cases, it occurs uh, below the level of, of consciousness. Okay, call it subconsciously. People have a problem. They're thinking about it, thinking about it. It's the problem is incubating. Mm-hmm. They get nowhere. Uh, they go to sleep. They go for a walk. One day, and suddenly, bang, the answer is there. Now, they weren't consciously thinking about the problem when it suddenly popped up. But, in fact, their brain, various regions, was, in fact, working continuously. Right. Or if they were asleep, they were actually unconscious as opposed to subconscious, um, you know, by, def- by some definition, but by that, popular definition. Although, interestingly Although, enough, in both dreaming sleep and non-dreaming sleep, the brain is continuously organizing and reorganizing memories and, in fact, solving problems. Hmm. Fascinating. Fascinating. Uh, Sherry in Linwood, Washington. We have about 30 seconds, Sherry. Oh, well, I'm about 74 and uh, will be next month. And um, when I was about, oh, in early 20s, in the late 50s, my mother gave me something called Amplus, and it changed my life. Mm-hmm. And she was able to get it for many years. And I, uh, through, cause she lived in a small town, and uh, the druggist just happened to say, you know, she said, I'm tired all the time, and he gave her this. And she said, why don't you take one of these to me one day? It changed my life completely. Um, other than that... For the better? I, oh, absolutely. Yeah, so, oh, absolutely. So you're I, one of those people who was benefited by t- by the use of methamphetamines or, inf- or stimulant drugs. Yes. In yes. fact, I had, to take, I had to take less because I couldn't get it otherwise. Yeah, so I right. Would... No, I get it, Sherry. Thank you very much for the call. And, and this is, you know, there are some, a lot of success stories out on both sides, Richard. That, that's right. I'm not willing to suggest that there is no place at all for medication. For the severe cases... It, it is useful, particularly when people are disabled uh, yeah. and if they can't function at yeah. uh, Well said. Dr. Richard Silberstein of Swinburne University, HunterSchool.org. Check that out. And, of course, TomHarvin.com.